Good morning.
Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday, August 7th. I have been gone for a few weeks, so it is good to be back with you all here in person again, so we're glad to be back. And thankful for those who were leading you in my absence. I, we were able to, I love technology. We were able to watch and participate no matter where we were. In the middle of Alaska, we could still worship with the church, which was exciting, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. So I'm gra- glad to be here. I'm glad that you are joining us here in person and those you are joining online. We're glad you're worshiping with us today on this Sunday. I invite you to stand as you are able to be in a place of prayer and join in the call to worship this morning. We gather to worship our God. Send your spirit among us. We gather from many places with many things on our hearts. Send your spirit among us. We gather and turn our hearts to you, O God. Send your spirit among us. We gather as beloved community. Amen. I invite you to continue to be in prayer with me as we pray our opening prayer together. Gracious and loving God, as your beloved children, you call each of us in our own unique way. Send your grace upon your people gathered that we may follow your ways of truth, walk in the paths of steadfast love, and proclaim the good news of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to remain standing and join in our opening hymn. It's hymn number 398, Jesus Calls Us. You may follow along in your hymnal or the words will also be on the screen. may be seated. I'm asking for a volunteer, young or young at heart, it doesn't matter, whoever wants to come up here and grab something that they can then distribute out into the room. Oh yes, Alex, come on up. So everyone's going to get a sheet that has two name tags on it. If you already have one with your name, maybe you put one on when you came. If you already put one on this morning, then you only need one more. So, oh, we've got two volunteers. So give, I'm gonna keep one for me so I don't forget. There you go, so give everybody, everybody needs two name tags. One you're gonna write your name on. So if you already did that, you only need one more name tag. You all get to participate in our, in our children's message today, so I wanted to make sure you had your supplies so you'd be ready. So on the first name tag, you can go ahead and write your name. Everyone knows those, so you can go ahead and put your name on that first one and feel free to attach it to yourself if you haven't already done so. I'll have two name tags. Make sure we're good and covered, there we go. 
And then our other name tag we're going to do something with in just a minute. If you need a writing utensil, maybe raise your hand and someone else can bring you a writing utensil. So if someone can grab some pens for those who need a writing utensil. So we're getting ready to start a new school year. Those of you who are school-aged or are teachers, you know that you're getting all your school supplies, you're getting your mindset, getting ready to wake up at an earlier time and maybe not stay up as late anymore, all of those things. So we're getting ready to start a new school year. And teachers, when you walk into your classroom, most of the time, not when you get older, that's not as happy. When you have your own desk, there's something on your desk that has your name on it. And the teachers all write their names on there, and it's just something that's really, it makes you feel welcome when you walk in the room. Some people think that when you meet somebody and they remember your name, to who, raise your hand, if you meet somebody and then they, you see them again later and they remember your name, how does that make you feel? Does that make you feel great? Yes, because you're like, oh, I, they remember me. And when you remember somebody's name, it helps too. So it makes you feel really special to remember. So sometimes name tags help us so that we don't go, oh, I can't, because you want to call people by their name. Well, in our story from 1 Samuel in a little bit, we're going to hear about someone named Samuel, hence it's from 1 Samuel, and God calls Samuel by his name. God knows everyone's names, and it's important to God that he calls, that God calls people by their names. So in this story, we'll hear Samuel is asleep, and God calls to him. So on your other name tag, I want you to write the word, the name Samuel. So everybody write Samuel, I'm going to do that too. I sometimes want to put an A in there. I don't know why, but it's an E, in case anyone else needs a reminder other than myself. <laughs> Samuel's mother had wanted a son more than anything, so she prayed to God for a son, and she promised that if she had a son, she would, raise the, she would give the son back to God to, to be a leader in the church. So I want you to draw on your on your name tag somewhere on there, praying hands or someone, however your drawings of hands or a person praying, everyone has different artistic skills. There's no judgment here, because I'm not a great artist either. So you can draw a stick figure with someone praying. I don't know what that would look like, but you can do it however you feel that you think it looks like that. So she prayed to God, and she had a son, and she brought, she raised, she brought him into the world, and then, Samuel went to live and become a priest, and, and then he was sleeping. He was just a little boy. He wasn't very old. And God called out to him, Samuel. And Samuel didn't know who was calling him, so he thought it was Eli, his, his priest. And he's like, Eli, what do you need? And he goes, I didn't say your name, so he goes back to sleep. And here's Samuel, and he's like, what? What do you need? Eli said, I didn't call your name. And then Eli realized it was probably God who was calling his name. And so he went back to sleep, and he said, next time, answer and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel goes back to sleep. And he hears Samuel, and he says, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And God tells him that God will lead him and guide him. So what I want you to put on there now, you can either draw a church or you can draw a cross, but something to symbolize that Samuel is devoting his life to the church. So if you want to draw a church with a cross on the top or just a cross, that's up to you, however you want to draw that. So now I want you to take this name tag, and you're going to put it upside down so that you can read it, which is a little different than most name tags. So you're going to put it upside down so you will be reminded that Samuel was called by his name just as you are also called by your name to serve God. So I invite you to pray with me. Dear God, repeat after me, dear God, today we are listening for your call. You have something special for us. May we listen, and may we answer, here I am, Lord, amen. 
Our scriptures this morning, as I said, one comes from 1 Samuel and the other one is from Mark 1 and Gail is our liturgist today. So I'm reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10 and 19 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The second reading this morning, the, the gospel reading is from Mark chapter two, verses one through four and nine through 20. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. And then some people came bringing, him, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. I need to stop you for a second. Oh. It's supposed to be Mark 1. <laughs> oh, no. I can give you, if you oh, this is kind of small, but I can give it to you. Do you want me to get a Bible? Um, or you can do it on here and I can make I it. I can bigger. do it on there. Let me get it bigger though. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I can do this quickly. <laughs> I'm trying to make it a bigger font. There we go. That's not really. There we go. That's however you need to do that. <laughs> okay. If it's not big enough, I can grab a bottle too. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> In the beginning of the good news of about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in, in Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. 
At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. And without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So is this part of it, too? Yep, that's it. You're good. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Is this all I had? I think so. Okay. Blessings this morning. As I said, it's great to be back. It's a joy to be here. And today we begin a seri worship series on discipleship. Discipleship by the sea. Jesus spent a lot of time by the ocean, by the sea, and by the water, whether it was calling the disciples or preaching to the people or healing. Jesus spent a lot of time by the sea. So we're going to explore over these next few weeks what it means to be called by God, how God is calling each of us to do what we alone can do, to use our spiritual gifts to do what God has set forth before us. We'll be looking at several chapters in Mark, so we'll get to hear a little bit more from the Gospel of Mark in the next few weeks. Today we hear from John the Baptist at the beginning where he's preparing the way for the Lord, he says. When I hear that, I always think of the song from, oh gosh, now I'm, is it Jesus Christ Superstar? Prepare the way of the Lord. It sings in my head whether I want it to or not, it's there. Because it's so important, it just reminds me that we're all called to prepare the way for the Lord. We're all called to do what we need to do to let the world know who Jesus is, to let the world know who God is. And each of us can do that in our own ways. I invite you to pray with me. Holy and loving God, we long for your peace and trust in your promise that we hear your call, your call on our lives and live according to the ways that you have led us. May we be open to your wisdom, to your guidance, to your grace, and may we be open to the challenge that you offer each of us to live more fully as your disciples. Lord, I pray all of this, and I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Have you ever been in a crowd and heard your name? If you're a mom, you've probably heard mom and you've turned. Even if your kids aren't with you, you still turn because it's such a part of who you are. Or if you have a name that's common and you hear your name being called out and you turn and you're like, I don't know anybody in this place, but somebody's calling my name. Or have you gone to a crowded place with a group like maybe your family or friends and somehow you guys end up separated and you're like, Joan or... Emily or Linda or somebody and you're trying to find the person and you can't find them until you finally do reconnect again and you're like okay but in that moment while you're waiting to reconnect or in that moment where you're like oh who's who's here with me there's a little bit of uneasy sometimes and that you're not unsure what's go you're just unsure about what's going on and God's calling on us can be similar if we heard in our story from Samuel that God calls us and sometimes there's so many other sounds going on in our lives and things that we're looking at that we don't hear God's calling our name. 
In our reading from 1 Samuel, we know, we hear that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Yet was the key word in that sentence. He did not yet know the Lord. And yet the Lord knew Samuel and called Samuel by name. Samuel wasn't praying to God. Samuel wasn't in worship. Samuel wasn't doing anything but trying to get some sleep. He wasn't expecting anything that night except to rest. And yet God called him then. God called him by name. But Samuel didn't know who was calling him. He was confused. He was probably a little, if you get woken up in the middle of the night, you're a little unsure of what's happening because you're still half asleep. And even though it took three times and he still didn't understand and he finally did, God didn't give up. God kept calling his name, kept calling his name, kept calling his name. And like Samuel, it took God a few times for me to figure out my call. It took conversations and connections with amazing mentors in my life to understand that I could answer a call on my life into ministry. From when I was first called into ministry and as a high school senior until the day some 18 years later, just like Samuel, I finally said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Countless mentors crossed my path walked alongside me, encouraged me, challenged me. I'm thankful for the youth leaders who saw something in me and encouraged me to get involved in the conference level. I'm thankful for that first female pastor I had who showed me that it was possible to be a pastor and to be a woman. I'm thankful for the district superintendent who was also a woman who showed me what grace and leadership and determination looked like in the church. And I am thankful for countless friends and church members who helped me to hear God's voice, encouraged me to share God's calling on my life. And it's because of a community of faith a community of people, both clergy and lay people, that I was able to answer that call. And I imagine for each of you, there were proud, there have been people in your life who have encouraged you to be your best self. Just as the Lord knew Samuel, the Lord knows each and every one of us and calls each and every one of us by our names that just like this, He doesn't need a name tag. God knows us. Samuel was called by God to go out into the world to be a prophet. And we too are called to go out into the world and share the good news of Jesus, to live our lives differently because Jesus is a part of us. Our gospel reading is one that is familiar. We hear this call of the disciples over and over again. Fishermen, common fishermen, just going about their day, not expecting anything different than every other day of their life. And along comes Jesus and he says, put down your nets and follow me. And they do. This was true for these early disciples and all of the disciples since then and even for us today. Jesus called all of them individually by name and calls us individually by name. Now, Too often we think of being called as just for a few people or just for those who are called to ordained ministry. But God's call is much, much bigger, much broader than that. God calls for each and every one of us to live our lives to the fullest, to continue to grow in faith throughout our lives, to serve the church, to serve our community, and to join together to transform the world, as it says in our United Methodist mission statement. And most importantly, we are called to do this, each of us, in our own unique, authentic way. As we heard today and we hear time and time again throughout scripture, God often shows up and calls us in some of the most ordinary, mundane times of our lives. For Samuel, it was when he was sleeping. For the fishermen, it was when they were out doing what they do, catching fish. 
For you, it may be at the checkout line at the grocery store or at the ball field watching your favorite game or watching your kids or your grandkids play, walking out in your community or sitting in a church pew or a coffee shop or at your workplace or at your school or maybe just minding your own business at home, maybe even fast asleep like Samuel was. And just as God calls us in a variety of ways and places, God calls us all to a variety of things. Melissa Lober, a longtime Christian writer and director of communications for the Baltimore Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church, explains it this way. A call is unique for every person, but every call shares certain characteristics. A call is always personal and tailored to fit a person's soul. It builds on one's spiritual gifts. It usually feels urgent and persistent. A call is a response to a summons. It's a kind of surrendering, a challenge, a joy. One's call should not be mistaken for a job. A call is bigger than what we do for living. It defines God's intentions for our life. Our job is a way of pursuing our call, but so are our hobbies, the things we do in our churches and communities and the ways we interact in the world. So how is God calling you to use your spiritual gifts in your community, in your workplace, in your family, or in this church? How has God's call on your life changed over the years? Because God doesn't call you once and then you're done. God calls you again and again as your life changes and your circumstances changes and you are called to different things in different parts of your life. As I said, I, I became a pastor later. I was called also to be a teacher before that. And there are teachers who are called to be teachers. Lawyers who are called to be lawyers. Engineers who are called to be engineers. Scientists who are called to be scientists. All of us have a calling. How we do our job because of our spiritual gifts makes a difference. How we live our lives because of our spiritual gifts makes a difference. God calls us each uniquely, differently, authentically, to live our best lives and to be our best selves out in the world. None of us are the same. No two teachers, no two lawyers, no two marketing directors, no two writers, no two pastors are exactly the same. That's the amazing thing about calling. God knows us and knows what we're capable of and asks us to live our lives differently because of that call in our lives. So I encourage you to think about where and how God is calling you today, how God has called you in the past and the things that have come in your path to encourage your calling. And may you use your calling to share God's love throughout the community, to throw your net wide and large, just like those fishermen for fisher for people, but to do it in the way that God has called you to do it. May you listen to God's call and answer God's call with your servant is listening. Here I am, Lord. Amen. I invite you now to a time of silent prayer to sit with God and to listen to the music and may it bring you a space of comfort, a place to just be with God. And then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together.
invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to a time to share in our gifts and offerings, so I invite the ushers to come forward. So we come to a time to share in Holy Communion. If you did not receive your communion elements, raise your hand and we'll make sure you get them. And those of you joining with us at home, if you can find a cracker or a piece of bread and some juice to join in our communion as well, we invite you to join with us at home as well. Communion is something that connects us throughout the world, connects us to Christians everywhere. It reminds us that together we are joining with the body of Christ. We are joining with other Christians around the world. And it reminds us of that gift, of that special night that Jesus had. Gathered with his friends, he gathered in that upper room with those whom he traveled and taught and led and who had followed him on the journey. And he knew what was going to happen, so he wanted to give them another lesson before he left. So he told them, he took that bread that was at the table, the common bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Every time that you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he blessed it, gave thanks and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My love poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Every time that you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts, we give thanks to you, God. We thank you for the gift that it is in our lives, the reminder that it offers us, that we are never alone, that you are with us all of our days, and we give thanks to you, almighty God. Amen. Our closing hymn today comes from the little black book, The Faith We Sing. It's number 2130, The Summons, and I invite you to stand and join as you are able. This song always reminds me of our call to go out into the world because of what we feel in our heart from Jesus, to go into the world, to love the world, to love God, and to spread that love everywhere we go. So when we go today, may we enter into this world nourished by our meal and filled with love to share God's love in how we live and breathe and interact in our world. Go in joy and peace. Amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. 